Okay, uh, the recording has been started and uh, today uh, we are going to present the results of uh, our work last, oops, sorry, probably should turn off the sound on the mobile phone. Uh, the result of our, oi, uh, of a work last two months. It's, it's update upgrade of the Plotly KT uh, or Plotly Kit library. We've started working last uh, year, and uh, um, today we are going to present some theory about it and uh, uh, present the examples. For, for it and uh, some features of the library. First of all, the first section is about theory. It's a little bit boring. And uh, yeah, I, I forgot to say it's a, it's a project run by uh, Jet, in JetBrains research and we are doing it uh, nuclear physics methods laboratory at MIPT. And we have this nice new logotype, uh, thanks to Alexander Svetlishny, it's a Kotlin for science. And uh, uh, we are doing it together, uh, myself, I am Alexander Nozick and uh, Ekaterina Samrodo from High Schools of Economy in, in Moscow and uh, she is uh, a JetBrains research intern this year. So first of all, a uh, bit of the boring theory uh, about this. Um, the ever conflict of dynamic or uh, versus static typing we all know that uh, static typing is good. It uh, allows us a compile time safety. It uh, allows us to do good IDE hints and auto complete features. And uh, what is more important, it allows us to handle errors in uh, both in compile time and in runtime uh, transparently and save us a lot of time debugging. On the other hand, uh, dynamic typing is uh, useful when, sorry, I need to switch to let people in. Um, the uh, dynamic tapping is uh, useful for mm, so, some operations with the trees, with the dynamic trees. For example, uh, with um, we usually want this for serialization. Uh, we usually want this for. Uh, for, for dynamic patching of objects, and we need to uh, evaluate, evaluate dynamic uh, extensions like the monkey patching, for example. Yeah, when we're talking about uh, plotting libraries, we are usually working, working with the dynamic structures because the structure of the model itself is uh, really complicated, and uh, we have a lot of properties, and we usually have more properties or, than we can handle in a static uh, library, or at least we want to. Uh, and uh, there is a, always a question, do we have, uh, do we want a static typing or we, do we want a dynamic typing when we are working in this plots libraries? And in, actually in Kotlin, we can do both. It is a very interesting thing that we can have a dynamic object, uh, which is, walks and works like a dynamic object, but is a static object from the user side. So we have uh, both dynamic features like uh, callbacks for any field or uh, any other things, and uh, uh, autocomplete and uh, year checking at the same time. For example, uh, consider we have uh, this uh, solid thing. It's not from the Plotly kit. It's uh, from our, our other project, Vision Forge. And um, uh, this allows us uh, to change the color of uh, 3D solid. And uh, all we need is to create this extension property, uh, which um, when changed, changes the material, the color of uh, the color property of the dynamic object inside, and when when uh, red, uh, it uh, reads the appropriate dynamic object. It's very uh, convenient for such structures. In case of uh, Plotly, we have another feature: is the 
type safe delegates. For example, you probably know it is hard to make uh, a uh, a type which accepts only, for example, uh, positive values or values in a specific range. They uh, they have this feature in some language, but it it is very sophisticated. In this case, we can check those values uh, in the runtime dynamically, which is also very convenient. Of course, you do not have a static checks. You can't uh, check uh, during compile time. You do not know that the value will be in this range, but you can check it as soon as you type, uh, try to pass it as an argument, you can check it. And we have uh, a number of those cu custom delegates in the plot the kit library. Uh, and what is the most important part of this boring theory is the updates. Usually, if you want to update, uh, I forgot to mention that the Plotly kit is the library running on the JavaScript on the browser. So it's uh, if you want to change something uh, from your, for example, Kotlin GVM or the server-side code, you need to uh, send uh, this update uh, via REST or any other protocol you want. And so usually uh, the case is that you have a uh ch make changes to on the server side change the model then serialize this model uh, and then send the serialized model uh deserialize it back again and uh, then uh, perform some kind of reconcile operation uh to minimize uh, redraw of the plot over any other structure if we are not relying on a static structures, but, but uh, instead we are using dynamic structures. We can do it this way. We can generate an event each time a user changes uh, some property on the server side model. Then we need uh, to send only this value with its name, with its path in the tree, uh, without any serialization, with a very simple serialization, because we do not we, we know exactly how this change looks. We do not need to create specific serialization models for each uh, server-side model. And then we can apply this change directly to this tree and listen uh, to its changes and redraw only the part of the plot which relies uh, specifically on uh, this change. Also, which is probably more important or less important, I don't know, but it's, it's very convenient that we also can have a, a change aggregator, meaning that if you have a lot of change, a lot of change in the small time, you can not send them one by one, but aggregate them in a structure here using, for example, uh, Kotlin coroutines flows and uh, put them to the uh, client. And actually, we can do a real-time update of the plot this way, because we, we've tested that the Plotly kit works with uh, uh, at least 10 milliseconds per update uh, circle, and maybe even faster. If uh, the channel, transport channel, does not allow to send uh, those updates fast enough, then we have automatic more pressure, because as soon as we stop, uh, we feel the bulk of this aggregator. It waits uh, for next event send. It does not, it does not send uh, as fast uh, as the updates coming. It sends only at, at the pace it wants. Uh, now I uh, leave the uh, place for Yekaterina to show us uh, some examples, of actually, what actual library can do. Well, I need to show you my screen. Um, just a minute. Um, sorry. Wow. Uh, does it work? Yeah, yes, it's okay. Okay. 
Uh, today I'm going uh, to show you the most beautiful, difficult and complicated pictures uh, that I have made um, during my work on this version of library. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to show you the picture of its in this function. Uh, you can see it on the screen. Uh, well, first of all, to uh, make picture a picture like this, you need to uh, hide axis, uh, uh, axis lines uh, and zero lines. Uh, it can be made uh, with the uh, layout perimeter. Uh, let me second. Like a uh, zero line uh, is hidden now. Uh, these uh, arrows uh, were made using annotations uh, without text. Uh, so uh, you need to specify the start and uh, finish coordinates uh, of the arrow. And uh, you can uh, choose the color and width uh, parameters. Uh, after after that, uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, tick some labels uh, near the near the axis, uh, and uh, in this example, uh, I uh, have used um, uh, some labels with tech. Uh, for using tag, you need to specify a uh, custom MathJax header, uh, but you need to remember that some font properties uh, have no effect uh, when uh, while using tag. So uh, in this case, uh, font size uh, was increased uh, using huge and large tech commons. Uh, the next thing we want to do uh, is to uh, highlight them, uh, some points, like these vertical red lines. Uh, it was made using uh, layout shapes. Uh, in fact, uh, it is vertical lines. Uh, for using vertical lines, you need to specify similarly uh, start and uh, finish coordinates. And uh, you can choose uh, color and width and type of the these lines. Uh, well, uh, uh, it is uh, that's all that I uh, that I wanted to say about this picture. And uh, the next examples are connected uh, by one thing. They all uh, show uh, some counter lines, uh, some function counter lines. So uh, the first picture is heat map with annotations. And uh, the first noticeable feature is uh, changing font color of the annotations. Uh, it was made by uh, specifying a font co color font for uh, every sorry uh, for every annotation. Uh, after that, and hiding uh, errors of annotations, of course. Uh, after the, after that, all the annotations are passed uh, to the layout in annotation perimeter uh, as, as a list. You can see here examples that could not be done with a Plotly.js basic API because it's a declarative. And in this case, we have, have a sharing logic between the layout and uh, trace data, which, which is very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next remarkable feature uh, is increased font of axis labels and the styled color bar that is on the right of the heat map. Uh, so if you're, uh, you can specify the 
uh, width of the color bar. And in this example, I have increased uh, font size uh, of the labels near the color bar to make it to make it easier to recognize it. Uh, well, if you want uh, to specify uh, the fields uh, like this, uh, with only with counter lines, uh, you need uh, you can do it uh, with counter plot, not heat map. So it is the same function, but uh, uh, but it is the next type of the plot, counter plot. Uh, and uh, here the color bar is, uh, the width of the color bar is increased. And uh, the next interesting thing is uh, that we can use different uh, color scale parameters. Uh, for example, uh, here it is the, the Portland value of the color scale. Uh, but of course, uh, you can customize uh, your, your own color scale. Uh, for, do, uh, for doing it, you need to specify at least two color values, the uh, least and uh, the minimum and the maximum value. Uh, so, but uh, it is possible uh, to show counter lines without uh, filling in all of these fields, like in this picture. Uh, I have divided all the values uh, of the function into two groups, positive and negative. It was done in this way uh, to make the color scale uh, symmetrical. In, in the left part and in the right part. And um, we can see it in the code uh, that it is, in fact, there are two functions and two counter plots in this plot. Uh, and in the negative one, uh, we specify uh, the dash line to uh, sign out that it is negative value. Uh, the color bar was hidden because it is <laughs> really not beautiful. Uh, the next noticeable thing is that in this example, I have uh, set uh, width and height parameters. Uh, the profit is that after downloading this image uh, to the file, uh, it will look the same as in the browser now. And if you don't specify the width and the height parameters uh, after downloading, it will look, it, it may look another way. Uh, so other part of example that, that I want to show is statistical graph. Uh, well, for example, uh, we can see box plot uh, with styling outliers. Uh, one of the notable features is uh, hidden um, hidden border of the legend, uh, and it can be uh, customized by changing the value of our border width perimeter and the position perimeter. Uh, so here we can see uh, a variety of um, outliers perimeters. Um, let me see. Well, uh, in, first, uh, in first race, we can see all points near the box. In, in the others, uh, there are only outliers points. And uh, we, can, we can highlight on, uh, some dots if it is needed. Uh, so the profit of using these 
uh, type of, of the plot is that uh, there is a great variety of additional information uh, on the plot, like median and some quartiles and minimum, maximum, and many other things that can be, of course, customized. And uh, the next type of the plot uh, where there are also such information is violin plot. Uh, so uh, there is, a, there we can see even median and mean parameters values. Uh, the interesting thing about this example is uh, that we have used uh, Krangel library to uh, download uh, the source uh, data frame and uh, we can we can pass uh, column values of the data frame uh, to the to the plot to the axis uh, without any uh, additional functions calling other methods and anything else. Uh, so uh, this is the code. Um, we have hidden uh, zero lines and the font sizes of the legend and axis labels were increased. And uh, that's about all that I wanted to say about statistical graphs. Uh, so I just uh, want to show some other um, graphics, some other types of the plot that can be done with our library, uh, just to have a look at it. So this is a dot plot. It was made by using scatter plot and uh, specifying scatter mode uh, markers parameter. Uh, this is a nested pie chart. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, there is two pie charts, uh, two plots uh, with pie type uh, in this plot, uh, and it was made by setting uh, how parameter of the pie chart uh, to some fraction. Uh, this is scatter plot. Uh, the noticeable feature is uh, that we have added uh, some text, some source on the plot. And it, uh, this example was taken from uh, official plotly documentation. And this is fully styled box plot. We used different uh, styles, different colors. And oh, uh, this is histogram also styled. And um, I think that's all. Yeah. Uh, all other examples and full code you can find uh, in, in our GitHub page. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you're welcome. Yes, uh, as Ekaterina said, it's, it's most of the examples are taken, as far as I understand, from the uh, basic examples in the Plotly library itself. But you can, uh, saw that it's a fully statically typed uh, out complete uh, and uh, other benefits from the Kotlin you can have a, uh, with the collection operations and other features. Uh, do anyone have questions right now? Okay, no questions right, right now. So uh, I will come to uh, the final part of our presentation and I will present the features which are not actually in the Plotly, library, Plotly GS library itself and which we can do with the Kotlin multi-platform. Uh, okay. Screen sharing on. I think you probably see my screen right now. Um, 
here are the features. The first is uh, the most expected feature is the integration with the Kotlin Jupyter. It's still in the experimental stage, but it's, uh, it's usable. And for that, we are going back to the browser and we are opening this uh, Plotly Kit uh, demo um, Kotlin Net Notebook, which is uh, also included in the library in the notebook di directory. In order to make it work, you have to copy uh, the module definitions uh, to Jupyter, Jupyter Kotlin library uh, folder in your user uh, folder, uh, like it's, it is uh, set in the Jupyter Kotlin documentation. But right now, let, let us see what we can do. Uh, here we import this library by, by just, uh, uh, without any Gradle commands, maybe in commands we, we just need to pass this directive to use plotly. Now it is loaded and then we can start making plots and uh, you can see it uh, here. It's not even a plot, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a actually two plots here with a custom HTML here. Uh, you can see here uh, some elements of Kotlin HTML library integrated in the plot. So you can do this, which we call a plotly fragment. We, we, we have a plot as well. For example, we can do it like this, which is much more simple. You have just plot the plot and pass the parameters. And of course, you have uh, things like autocomplete here. Uh, you can type this and uh, you will see a number of things you can do with this lay layout. For example, can probably add a, uh, uh, like let us change the font for example y axis uh, axis with a closure here and here we will type uh, like uh, font there should be font here tip ah. font maybe tick font we can we can use autocomplete to just to uh, I know I don't know we can change color uh, should work like this yes it does work you can see okay uh, this is how how it's work and uh, this is a fragment uh, which includes uh, some kind of custom rendering and you can uh, actually do a dashboards and uh, complicated things with the uh, additional uh, mar markup. But this is only a simple feature. Let us go to the more complicated one. And for that, we are changing to the uh, another notebook. It's called Plotless Server Demo. It uses a uh, different artifact. It uses Plotless Server. And let me show you what it can do. Here we have the same behavior. It uh, works a little bit slower because uh, I need to start something here. Then we can do the same picture. It's it's more or less the same. There's some bugs because that's 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 why the notebook support is still experimental. And then we can the same plot here. And when we can, can plot. Additional plot here is a simple sinus, and now let's do this. Uh, this actually works on the technology I told you before. It uh, creates a Ktor server here. You can see it. And uh, then it starts sending updates to the server using uh, WebSockets. Uh, you can see that the updates are actually done to the server-side model. It does not know anything about the front. It's all, all everything done with the coroutines on the server side. And then we can just cancel the update job. Or we can, uh, sorry, Katerina, it's still Krakazabra here. Uh, so we can change uh, layout as well. And we can, for example, stop the plotly server if we want. Now, uh, let us go to other examples. Here, uh, this, this example we already saw in the uh, notebook. This one is a more complicated server. Uh, it ha 
has uh, several plots and let us just start it uh, for, with a run. It's compiled and now we have uh, two pages. We have uh, two separate pages. You can see it in the, uh, in the header. So it's uh, two different pages with the dynamic plots. Here we can stop it right now. And it stopped. Uh, more complex picture with also with a, with a dynamic server and with a, some external libraries header like Bootstrap. Uh, we have a dynamic picture uh, which is uh, used as a test for uh, slow control system, that that aggregation system. And we can we can stop it here and see that the updates are stopped. Of course, you can still uh, operate, so do something with those pictures, like save them or just edit them in the online. Uh, another experimental feature is the uh, export uh, to the PDF or SVG via Oracle library provided by Plotly itself. It's still quite experimental, uh, but it should probably work for you if you want. You can just render this. Uh, do not render those plots, but just export them directly to the file if you want. Also, I wanted to show you, I'm not sure if I closed it, but I can start it. We have a JavaFX support. Uh, for that, we have this uh, FX demo module, and I will just run it. And you can see the dynamic picture here, the static picture here. And for dynamic picture, you can change the parameters in the back end and see how it changes in the rendering online. Of course, it, it, it requires a uh, JavaFX web, web view uh, to work. We, we can't work without it. Finally, uh, maybe I just forgot something. Uh, yes, two other features that are direct Kotlin Java for JavaScript rendering. And we have it, uh, sorry for a small type, uh, for, for small letters, but here we have a compiled program in JavaScript without anything else. And it's not very heavy, it's about two megabytes and we can just launch index. And we have a JavaScript uh, program with a dynamically changing color. It's not a static picture, but it's a dynamically changing picture. It's, it's a pure JavaScript. It uh, just uh, uses only this custom made uh, Java, Kotlin JavaScript build. And the final thing what we have is a very experimental support for Plotly scripting. And it uh, just used Kotlin scripting framework and it is used to render files like this. Here you do not see any code, any imports. It's just the Kotlin code describing the page uh, itself and we can launch it via the uh, shell by we have a, this command line application i can just call it now yeah. we have some kind of uh, command line interface and then i can launch it to render the picture yeah, what happened? yeah it works so it renders the picture with it in a temporary file and produces this temporary HTML file, which could be seen. Uh, that's probably all for the features for today, for, for today's presentation. And uh, of course, you're welcome to leave issues in the GitHub, uh, leave comments, feature requests. We did not cover the whole Plotly uh, API right now. Uh, follow us on the JetBrains research page. Uh, we can discuss uh, this library in the Kotlin, uh, Kotlin Slack science channel or in our uh, Telegram. 
And uh, I want to remind you that this project was partially founded by the JetBrains Research Grant. Uh, that's all for the talk, uh, but I uh, would like to hear any questions that are left. Do anyone have a question? Well, it seems uh, nobody has a question. I hope that there, there will be questions again uh, in the offline mode. I probably f I uh, decided to make this presentation in English, but I forgot that it's, it's a very early uh, morning in the USA. So that, that's why probably not a lot of people here. Sorry for that. OK. If uh, there are no questions, uh, uh, then that's all for today's presentation. And turn it off the recording. <laughs>